Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, uh, we're doing another questions video, answering many of the questions you guys have asked in the comments section down below. Um, just a reminder, if you guys have any questions about anything, check out the comments section in any of our videos. And uh, many of you have made questions that are not going to be covered in this video. They'll either be covered in future uh, question videos or we've pulled a couple aside that are big enough that we're just going to film uh, dedicated videos about them. So if you don't see your question answered today, stay tuned in the next couple of weeks uh, and you'll probably see it answered there. So uh, first question, we've gotten a ton of comments uh, and questions, concerns, queries, qualms about uh, the museum closing. Uh, September 7th was our last day open this season. Um, normally we would stay open longer, but with the reduced visitation due to the pandemic, uh, we just can't afford it. Normally the bulk of our income does not come from, uh, from self-guided tours. People visiting during the day it comes from the schools doing guided tours. It comes from our overnight program and it comes from our very successful event uh, program. And the state of New Jersey isn't letting us do that stuff uh, for, for good reason. So we are not making the money we need to, to continue to operate. So the museum is closing um, for probably the next six months. Although, you know, any, any number of things could happen that would allow us to reopen or force us to remain closed longer. It really depends on what the global situation looks like, what our financial situation looks like. Uh, when we start to get back into the next busy season. Uh, if one of you is a billionaire out there and wants to just give us some uh, operating money to get us through the next six years, great. Uh, if one of you knows the governor of New Jersey personally and can think you can convince him to throw some money into the state's operating budget to help us get through, uh, it's great. If not, we will be back and open to the general public again, uh, possibly in April 2021. So in the meantime, the ship uh, is furloughing almost all of its staff. There will be a couple of security guards kept on to keep the ship safe. There will be a couple of maintenance personnel kept on to continue to do work on the ship. Uh, and there will be a couple of education personnel kept on to uh, continue to work with the collection and to create educational content. So you'll keep hearing from the museum throughout the closure. Uh, and of course, our accountant will be kept on to keep our finances balanced. We are not closing down because we have no money in the bank. Uh, we are closing down while we still have money in the bank so that we've got money to get started when we reopen. Uh, so all that said, if you want to help us financially in, in some small way, uh, or if you just want to spread the word about the museum, check the link down below in the description about our GoFundMe campaign. We really appreciate anything you can do to help us out, um, whether that is a small contribution to the museum or just sharing it so other people know of uh, what condition we're in. So our next question is, what is this metal wall thing behind me? One of our viewers uh, watched one of our other videos in which this was in the background. And uh, since we've never made a specific video about the breakwater, we're gonna cover it here today. So uh, breakwaters are very common features on ships. Uh, and I can't think of a single battleship off the top of my head that doesn't have one. Uh, and the whole crux of the issue is battleships go through the waves, uh, and sometimes those waves come up over the bow of the ship. So because the ship is going through the waves, the waves then go down the length of the ship for science reasons. Uh, the crew is up on deck here working. So the breakwater is designed to force the water out to the sides of the ship so it's not running down the entire work surface of the ship uh, and it's not going to be hitting any of the machinery or important stuff behind it. 
Now, this is specifically important for Iowa class battleships uh, because Iowa class battleships are extremely narrow up forward in order to get their high speed. This means that they're a lot less buoyant up forward, uh, and so they tend to rock forward a lot more than uh, other types of battleships. The designers knew this was going to be an issue. They knew what they were doing. They built battleships before, uh, so they put a really steep uh, bow on the ship. So that makes it a little bit harder for waves to wash over it. But of course, it still happens. These ships could operate in extremely heavy weather, uh, and, and even moderate weather, you could, at, at high speed, you get waves coming over the bow. Uh, so that angle actually magnifies the intensity of the waves washing down the deck of the ship. And so the breakwater is extremely important in stopping that and diverting it off to the side where our gunnels are, where the water can be drained off of the ship. If you guys can think of any battleships that don't have a breakwater, let me know in the description below. I, I genuinely can't think of any. So uh, our next question, um, we just wanted to clarify why we were using the OBA the other day, why we brought this out of storage and were uh, burning some of the oxygen cartridges in the OBA. So these parts we were able to strip off of other Navy ships. Um, every now and again, the Navy opens up decommissioned ships for us to go and take parts off of. And uh, our volunteers went over, and these were on the racks, and we have the empty racks here, so they grabbed them and then put them out on display. Well, this stuff, because there's a chemical reaction going on here, is a chemical explosive. And if it gets wet, it can blow up a little bit, and if it gets oil on it, it can blow up a lot. Uh, so, as I've been finding these in various displays throughout the ship, I've been uh, pulling them out so that we can bleed them in the actual OBA and uh, then render them inert before we put them back out on display. Uh, and just the other day, I found an entire box marked Chemex, chemical explosives, full of these. Uh, so that was the impetus for us doing the video. And we're still in the process of bleeding them all dry, uh, and then eventually they'll, they'll go back out. So our next question is a fun one, uh, because this is something I didn't think of when we were making the initial video. Uh, the question is, this is where the crew put in uh, regular, like, off-the-shelf washers and dryers to wash their civilian clothes in. Uh, and then the question is, where did they ventilate to? Everybody's washer and dryer at home ventilates. Uh, so when I got the question, we came back here to look, and uh, it seems like this being an unauthorized ship halt, um, they didn't ventilate them anywhere. I think it just ventilated right into the space. Uh, we can see no evidence, no modifications to the ship um, that show that there was any sort of ventilation installed with this equipment. If you look, you can see they added uh, power for the equipment. They used the water lines that were already here, and this was a shower for the washing machines. Um, but you can see nowhere where they would ventilate. So first off, let me apologize for the sound in this video. We are recording on the battleship. So one, I'm in a steel box. Two, um, the shipboard ventilation, other equipment sounds are definitely going on in the background. Uh, we do use a microphone and, and other professional equipment to shoot these videos. Uh, it is not good enough for filming on a battleship. But that's the whole charm of this channel is I get to film on a battleship. I'm not filming in a studio throwing pictures up behind me most of the time. So uh, this question is another one where they saw all stuff in the background and wanted to know what was going on. Uh, in this case, all the tags that show up on some of the equipment that uh, we sometimes film with me in front of. So today we're in the IC switch room. This is forward on third deck of the ship, and uh, this is where all of the internal communication equipment lives. 
much of this equipment uh, was deactivated by the Navy and is no longer used. Uh, wires were cut, fuses were pulled, parts were removed for use on other ships. Some of it has been reactivated by uh, volunteers and staff of the museum. And uh, we still use it. For example, the ship's 1MC system, or the uh, general announcing system, the PA that goes around the ship, uh, we maintain that and we still use it. Uh, that is our emergency system if we have an issue. Uh, and that, that's the system we use to page people. If, say, you come to visit the ship and you lose the rest of your family, that's, that's how we call them. Uh, so, some of these tags are from our volunteers that say, hey, idiot, don't come down here and play with these switches. This operates a critical system. And some of these tags are from when the ship was decommissioned. This one's from 10 August 1990. Uh, and it's saying, danger, do not energize. Components from this system have been removed. Uh, and many of the tags are like that. Let's see. Yeah, these are all from uh, 28 August 1990 when the ship was being deactivated. Uh, so now we are behind the panel that we were just looking at. Uh, and you can see all of the exposed electrical stuff. That's another reason that you tag out a system. If I'm going to be working on this electrical and I've pulled the fuses and turned it off on that side, I don't want to be back here working and then one of my coworkers come in and be like, why isn't the 1MC working? And I try and turn that switch back on. Uh, so, number of reasons that you tag uh, almost always associate with the electrical equipment on board. Thank you guys for watching today. Uh, remember, if you have more questions, leave them in the comment section down below and we will get back to you. Uh, if you would like to support the museum while we're going through this really, really rough time, uh, and specifically, uh, the money you give here goes back into the YouTube channel and allows us to keep producing content, check out the GoFundMe link we have in the description down below. Uh, I really appreciate any support you give us. Uh, and remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you know when we're putting out new content. See you next time.